Okay. Hello. Uh, I am streaming today. It is Saturday, 12th, uh, the 6th of February. Um, I'm trying out YouTube. I did Crowdcast before, and then I realized that Crowdcast was having issues. It was just too difficult to access the streams. So I thought I would try YouTube. Um, if it works, it works. I hope it does. Um, currently below me, I guess, or what I'm looking at right now is what I did previously in the live stream, which was take a vintage photograph and try to emulate it. And that's what we're gonna do right below me. I have an image of a 19, I believe a play, The Shrew, but in like, it was 1930s, I believe? No, 1904. I'm literally seeing the description right here on the side. So I'm gonna double check. Okay, I think I can be heard. And um, yeah, so this was the last one and I just used gray to keep things simple so that we can get a look at, you know, the contrast and the, you know, all of the colors that go. Uh, sometimes when you want to draw and when you want to color in, you can kind of get confused by all the colors involved. So I like to simplify it in the draw with me's um, recently. Uh, previously, I used to do colors, but for the sake of simplicity, we're going to work with gray. And it's helpful because if you're working in pencil, you can also um, follow along and just use a bit more darker pencils, charcoal, that kind of thing. So... Yeah, we worked on this one as well, um, and this was like two weeks ago, this was like a week ago, and um, so I'm going to grab a hold of a new page, and we'll start, why do I have so many in-between pages? <laughs> Seems like I doodled quite a bit in here. Okay, there we go. We got a new page. Perfect. Okay. Um, this stream will be about two hours, and if you want to um, follow along with me, I would appreciate it. I'm currently going to um, map out where everything is, and I'm going to grab my favorite camera, you know, camera helper. There we go. He'll help me focus my camera. Uh, there we go. I think it's like here and up here there we have it we have our spaces and we probably won't get um we probably won't do a complete like landscape because our image is about a portraiture so i'm gonna just cut it to about maybe about here Yeah, we're gonna keep it square, <clears throat> at least I like to think so. Some of these borders are just not correct, but we'll figure that out. Um, I hope you're all doing well and that uh, your weekend is starting on a good foot. Um, I woke up this morning so cold. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Um, it's no, not spring yet. It's February, but it's still really, really, really cold. Okay, so I'm having... Where's my ruler? I had a ruler here, but I guess we won't use a ruler this time. Okay, so how do we start? Well, what I like to do is that I like to start with the overall shapes so she has this amazing um by the way while i'm doing this i have my phone out because i have the image on my phone as well sometimes when i look in the screen it's not helpful so um if you can see the image on your phone i have the patreon image uh previously um sorry i'm rambling i'm just not comfortable live streaming yet so uh hope you stay with me so the shape that she has is this like really amazing 
round, she's so she got this round hairdo. Um, and on top of that, she has this amazing like crossed arm figure. And then she also has this like veil. So I'm gonna just kind of, she doesn't have big shoulders. It's mostly her like puffy sleeves, but her puffy sleeves and her stance are giving me, I will not tolerate your nonsense feelings and I'm here for it, I like it. Um, so we have some puffy sleeves. We have her kind of like round headdress, not headdress, her round hair and her um, veil that comes about, kind of connects, so it's interesting. It kind of connects out here. And then we have all of the side, it comes down. So overall shape, if you made the image blurry, it would kind of have this general shape arena. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm also gonna just separate this into threes. I forgot to do that previously, but just for the sake of where everything is, I'm just gonna do that now, just so that I can figure out where everything is. Okay, and she has this really amazing, so I'm just gonna map out her face, and this oval, her hair that comes up, as well as her neck that comes out in her dress, her shoulder comes out a little bit, right, because she has this area that's the front of her dress that's all bejeweled and bedazzled. And then um, she has her puffy sleeve that comes out. And I don't know, so she has the puffy sleeve, but then she has this like sleeve that looks like it's been, I don't know, it kind of looks a little bit like armor in this, in this image, but I know it's not armor. So all I'm doing is kind of just like going off of the big shape of her sleeves. Her sleeves are actually going to be really helpful um, in helping us figure out where things are. So the reason why I say that is because looking at the empty spaces or the shapes of empty spaces can help. So if you want, we can isolate the top of her like bodice. So the shape, maybe I'll zoom in to help us. So if we zoom in, she has this really interesting shape of her bodice and her neck. So it's a triangle, but then you also have this like skewed, like rip, you know, rectangle square. So I'm just going to follow that. So I'm going to follow that. We have this, and then we also have a triangle that comes down. Okay. And then she has a little bit of her, okay, and in the middle we have her kind of brooch or whatever. We have our necklace. We're not doing details. Um, we're just kind of mapping where everything is. And sometimes all of these details can get so confusing, so I don't want to confuse anyone with that. Okay. And also puffy sleeves have folds, that's for sure. Okay, so now that we have figured out the neckline, we're going to go back out. I zoomed out a bit, and we have our outside shape. So puffy sleeve shape comes down in this long line, but then there's folds inside. So kind of places where you would imagine that it's been sewed and pleated in a certain way. And one arm is under the other. And this arm, most of it doesn't show, but you kind of show about to the forearm. And then the top of the arm kind of comes out to here. And um, it's not fully rounded, so this is my mistake. So I'm, I had a feeling that it was fully rounded, but with the shadow, it's not actually, it's kind of a bit blunted. 
So we're just gonna keep that um, there. I guess. Oh. Okay. YouTube's telling me that my live stream is having issues. Okay. Um, how do I fix that? Can you guys leave me a second while I get back? I just realized that my live is having issues. Um, I'm gonna figure that out. I'll be right back. Okay, um, I think I might have fixed the issue. Uh, if it happens again, uh, I do apologize, and I do apologize for this one. Okay, uh, where are we at? We were at the point where I was trying to draw um, her arm. Okay, so we're just gonna... She has these like really interesting lines in her sleeve. I don't know where they are, what they're for. Kind of comes over here. And we also have, so about midway through her sleeve, about here, you can see that her veil kind of catches. Right about 
down here and then it kind of comes down so there are certain spaces where we can kind of figure out where we need to uh, start our lines so look if it's helpful to uh, I guess it's like when you're when you're driving down the road sometimes you look at like you know visual cues like oh the store is there and if the store is there then something else is there um, and that's what I like to kind of imply um, with with art and with um, kind of figuring out where to place things okay so her veil is a bit uh, it's not fully down, it's kind of at a slight diagonal, it comes out around, and I'll zoom out a bit. There we go. So we can see the entirety of it. Uh, maybe it's a little too zoomed, but we can zoom out and zoom in as we please. Okay, so if this side, basically her hair has come up, Someone rang my doorbell, and it's too bad, because I'm not answering. Okay. So, her hair comes up and kind of supports the veil. The veil has a curve here, comes down. There's like a front piece that comes out to the front, and it maybe... It seems as though her veil comes in through, or maybe it's like folded in her arms. I don't know, it's so gauzy that I can't decipher it too much. But we'll just kind of figure it out until then. So I'm just gonna take this space. So the space between her hair and her veil, and we're gonna figure out how big the veil has to be. So this part of the hair is a bit um kind of how do i describe this shape it's like a rum rhombus or something so there's like this kind of shape in between her shoulder so it's like her shoulders about here so her shoulder is short it's about here and then she has this area that um it comes up it's her neck her neck comes up, and then her hair comes up in this way, diagonally up, and then we have part of the veil come in. So we're just kind of focusing on this empty space um, so that we can figure out where the veil goes and how much of the veil we need to be using. And there we have that side. Okay, so as we focus on the other side, the veil comes up. She also has this like, I don't know what it is. It's this hair jewelry at the top. Um, I won't go in depth with it. I'll just kind of push it uh, to and work on the detail. Um, the veil comes out and covers the left side and does this kind of ripple. She kind of ripples out and then it comes down. And there we have this part of the veil. It's not as rippled as I made it to be, but we'll, we'll figure that out. She has a lace-up portion here and then a rope about the front. Um, with a knot and two kind of, um, okay, what is it called? It's not a belt. I don't really know what it is, but it just kind of goes on that side. And all of this area is a bit darker than the rest. Most of the focus is coming through on the top of the face. So 
um, the light shines from above. That's why I'm creating some arrows. And which means that the light is hitting the top of her arms right here and about here and about the top of her sleeve and the sleeve here, it's hitting the light. It's also hitting it on her chest and also on her face and the top of her forehead um, and also hits some portions of her veil. So that is what we'll be working on. Uh, before I forget, there is a bit of a... So I think it actually starts from here. So the bottom of her dress actually starts about here. Made that mistake. And then she has this kind of like laced portion of her skirt. Um, and her bodice kind of comes out to here, I think. I think I made it a little too, um, too much on that side. It's okay. This is a point where we're doing a lot of adjusting, um, and you shouldn't feel bad if you don't get it right the first time. So her bodice is here, comes down, and it appears from the reference image that where her bot where her shoulders connects with where the edge of the cloth is about here. And then the rest of that is mainly veil and um you know, gauze, whatever gauze of the veil is there. Okay. Um, so, she has all sorts of interesting things here. I'm just going to create this little pattern. Um, it doesn't mean anything, it's just kind of where her beads are. And, um, we're gonna focus on her neck too. So this is her neck. Kind of made her head a little bit um, too close to her body. So we're gonna remedy that. Okay. So her neck is here, as you can see. And her face is about here. So maybe we need to kind of extend her a little further up, but for now, um, we're gonna keep things so she has a kind of square jaw with high cheekbones. Cheekbones come up come down and we have a little bit of shape here um, her hair starts from maybe where her jaw is so we're gonna do that and her jaw also from the bottom of her neck is where this kind of rounded part of her hair is her hair comes about so I'll just kind of map out her face for a hot second. So her eyes are about, this is her cheekbone, right? And her eyes are about above her cheekbone a bit. So we're just going to put her eyes about here. Okay. Her nose comes down, not fully to down the middle, but she's sort of like looking a bit to the side. Not necessarily, because most of her cheek is visible on the left-hand side. And then her mouth comes out about here. So, just a general, general shape, I guess. She has an earring that is visible, but we don't see her ear. Um, her hair comes up, maybe like at the edge of her brow, if her brow is about here. And it also comes up right above her other brow. And then the rest of her headdress is about higher. So I guess we're gonna push the page a little down. <laughs> okay. And there we have our general kind of sketch. Um, now we can focus on going more in detail and then hopefully 
by the end of the hour, um, we can get to the line work. Okay. So, the veil has a fold. So this part of the veil is actually um, the front of the veil and the inner part of the veil is a bit darker, which I would imagine that this part of the veil just shows more light. Um, and it comes down into this fold, I guess, where the veil folds. It comes down again. Kind of in like a little shape and the only parts that are visible are the highlights so the lightest parts on the left kind of near the bottom um those are the ones that we're gonna be establishing or showing off so these like little you know shiny bits are apparent and they come out and to the edge We connect them with a line so that we know where the fabric is going. And let me double check. Those little lines. Let's come here. It's about here, actually. I messed up. Fully out. It's about here and here. Okay, so we have the left side of the veil. Um, I do imagine that it's a little further out from the sleeve um, now that I'm looking at it. Okay, but general shape, we're gonna continue. So the sleeve is the next part. So this is the darker part of the sleeve that's in the shadow. We have a lot of folds that are, have a bit of shadow to them, which is super helpful. Um, our sleeve has this fold lower down below where it kind of gathers. So I'm creating this gathering. And then below it's not a completely straight line, so there's like this curve, this curve here, where the sleeve kind of bunches. So that's kind of where we want to focus on. Um, there's also a bunch about here. There's a couple of lines that come down, which means that the bunch kind of pleats. Um, and then our arm that we want to focus on, um, which is actually mostly in shadow. So this part's like in the shadow that's okay um and i guess maybe i was slick with it i didn't use a reference that had hands <laughs> did i cheat this time i might have okay so we have our wonderful skirt okay um and it this bit of a curve to it With this part being this kind of, I don't know what it is. Isn't it like a lace-up? Doesn't really look like a lace-up. I don't know what it is, but we're just gonna add it in. And we have these kind of, we have a line here. No, actually we don't have a line there. Pardon me. We have a line coming from the mid, I think this, so the rope comes about mid, about here. It kind of starts about here. So we're gonna push the rope down and then it disappears at the edge of her skirt around the bottom. So that it's like, there's still a lot of space to be had from the edge of the rope to the top the, the, or the bottom of the sleeve. Okay. I don't know why I can't speak today. <clears throat> I keep using like the strangest, strangest of ways to describe things. Okay. So we have a line here, which just indicates the fold of the fabric. And 
What is this line? Oh, I figured it out. Okay. So, about here, this line is a little too big, so I have to fix that. But So there's like this part of the veil on this side that comes up. The shiny part reflects the light and you can see it more readily. It comes out around the top, maybe like mid sleeve, and then it just kind of disappears into the veil. The veil goes up diagonally. There you have it. Um, so then the bottom of the sleeve comes down, not really in the light, so there's not really much detail we can see. There's a lot of smaller lines. Um, they kind of look like, you know, like veins, um, but we're not going to focus on that right now. I want to go back to the veil and the um, folds of this sleeve. So the folds of the sleeve you don't see because it's mostly hidden by the pieces of the veil. Um, but we can see that there's a bit of a line here um, and that's kind of a fold kind of makes like a donut shape and then we have another donut shape about here and then the sleeve comes up into a little poof up here I made the poof a little too big we will fix that poof is about here comes down is it still too big it's still too big <laughs> What have I done? <clears throat> okay. What am I missing? I'm missing something. Okay. Maybe that's what I was missing. The sleeve kind of comes a little bit shorter around here. There we have it. Smaller. We still have it coming out, so the top of the bodice, a little bump in the sleeve, um, kind of comes down, and there is an empty darker space, but most of that is mainly the veil. Um, has all of these really tiny lines in the veil. Alright, okay. So, we can focus on, okay, let's see, I'm trying to figure out where her, if I'm doing her neck properly, let's hope. <laughs> So what I'm doing right now is that I've just realized that there's a little bit of a dent in her um, kind of sleeve, and that's where the middle of the forearm, um, so there's like muscle here and there's muscle here. So the muscle in the forearm, top here and top here, are a little bit different. Um, kind of like, I guess if I were to show you. My workspace is so interesting. Okay, so if her arm was about kind of here, and then the bottom of her, her So if that's the hand, then you have kind of this part is the elbow, and then there's like this muscle that comes, and then there's like bone, and then the bones of the hand are. So there's not really that much of a muscle, but there is like a bit of a, a distinction. There can be a little bit of like a divot between. Um, so that's what I kind of was looking at. And that's why I adjusted it a, a slight bit. Um, Cause I just realized that the muscles of her arm um, are different. Okay. So I just want to darken this area. And it's often good practice to create the top of the person lighter than the bottom of the person or the bottom of the character, whoever you're trying to create. Um, mostly out of focus. 
So you want your character's face to focus um, more than um, more than the bottom of the character. So that's what I kind of mean. And I'm kind of shading the bottom of her neck because she does have a bit of shadow going on there. Um, and most necks have shadow. I hope the live stream is working okay. So most of the most bottom of the necks have shadow. If you just want to create an immediate like differentiation, just create a shadow at the bottom of your gun, like between your character's chin and their neck. Um, and that'll help. Okay. She also has a <clears throat> a hairpiece. No headdress. Nope. I just said that. Gosh darn. So she has this little jewel in the middle of her forehead um, connected by this little like tiara thing that connects to her veil <clears throat> so it connects to her veil and I just realized that there's I can't tell if she has these like curled portions in her front front of her bangs. They kind of look like pseudo I don't know, it kind of looks like they put like a little curl here, but I can't uh I can't fully make that assumption just yet. <laughs> Unfortunately. Okay. So she has a jewel and another one. And we have a lot of like, you know, headdress at the top, hairdress. No. <laughs> I need to stop using the word headdress. It doesn't it doesn't apply here. Why do I keep saying it? Okay. Okay, we have our shaded um, character mostly. I would now decide to focus on her face and then see if there's anything else I need to do um, in terms of like drawing detail. I'm gonna sharpen my pencil up right now. Hope you're doing well. Hope you're staying safe. Um, I can't believe I've been at home for almost, gosh, I don't know, maybe it'll be two years that I'm going to be at home all the time. Okay, so the top of her hair is lighter than the bottom of her hair. She has a lot of darkness in her hair at the bottom, which is um, normal because the light's coming from the top, like I said before. Uh, so. Now we're going to just work on her face. And this is the part that is difficult for me because I don't really know how to work with faces, but maybe we'll figure it out. So she has these amazing brows that um, come in real close and she has like a bit of a line, which means she's angry. She doesn't want your opinion. She's already heard your opinion. That's what I'm getting from this. And her eyes are actually, it's perfect. Her eyes have a bit of darkness because of the light. So her brow is creating a shadow. Uh, and her expression is more dark and more angry. So I'm overall a very good fan. Her nose bridge is, um, so I'm just gonna create a quick shadow. And she has her eye about, ooh, okay. So her eyes are actually really close to her, um, her eyes are really close to her eyebrow and then she has a shadow above her eyebrow and then also like a little bit below it. So there we have it. We have our one eye. Hopefully I did that correctly. 
and then we also have our other brow so this this shadow makes it seem like the top of her like the bridge of her brow is so incredibly small um it's it it's kind of a interesting illusion it, it's the shadow that comes from her brow uh over her eye and then under her eye and then you know because her eyebrows are just so wonderfully like linked together um she's really upset so she's kind of collected them okay so what now we gotta go to the other eye which is close Hopefully I didn't mess this up too bad. Hmm. <laughs> now that I'm looking at it, I think I want to move her eye a little bit. So I'm going to grab my pencil with the tiny eraser and just try to redo her eye. I'm not really satisfied with it. So there we have her eye, and we have her cheekbone, her face. She has a bit of a more rounded uh, jaw. So we're just gonna keep that. Um, she's not as gaunt as I kind of made her to be. So I'm gonna try to expand I think her cheekbone comes a little bit more up than that. Okay. Her hair is darker and then her nose so we're gonna get to her nose so her nose comes out and we get out. oh gosh noses are hard okay So I guess I'll explain myself. So I created this line that comes with her nostril. So she has her nostril and then she has the kind of nostril, outside nostril part. Um, and then underneath there's a shadow that goes from her kind of like Cupid's bow um, to the kind of bottom of her nose. So you can just shade that up and you'll get um, kind of that nose illusion and nose shading. So now we have to focus on her lips and she has this wonderful, um, wonderful Cupid's bow. And then the edges of her mouth are shaded a bit darker. her lips okay <laughs> yeah 
kind of shading her top lip and the edges of her lips. She has like a little darkness that kind of gives it like she's pouting at the edge. And then we're just gonna shade the, her bottom lip lightly. And then we're going to fix her chin because I just realized I made her chin not the way it seems to be. Faces are hard, guys. Faces are really hard. <laughs> it's very difficult for me to get a face right. I am not very good at these, but that's why we draw together to improve. job um, okay And now that we've done majority, oh, we also needed our, our earring over here. And then I think, I think there's another earring, but we just can't see it. So I'm just gonna add those in. Um, she has some shading on the edges of her face. Um, also here, which was a bit in darkness. Um, underneath her chin, we have some shading. Um, and what else? We have to do our bodice. So we're just gonna do that right now. I'm just gonna draw what I need to draw here. She has so many pearls or like jewels on her dress. I definitely will not be able to capture them all. <coughs> mm, excuse me. Oh, I apologize. I am just chronically allergic to everything. <gasps> not this drawing though. This drawing is, um, I'm having a lot of fun, and I hope you're having a lot of fun, too. Okay. So, we have our lovely lady, and, um, what I really like is that we've kind of, you know, a lot of parts of this are, are a bit blurry and, and hard to see, so we won't really get all the details, but we've gotten a good portion amount of details in. Um, and the outer area of her is going to be a darker shade. Um, so I guess if I'm going to show you on the left hand side, <clears throat> we're going to be working in grays. So we'll have our black as our first one. Then we have our second to darkest shade, our dark gray, which kind of looks really similar, but it, it does have a difference, I promise. Um, then we have our neutral gray. So this is our medium gray. Cool. Then we have our lighter gray. Out here. And then we have our completely white, which, by the way, this is just blender. Um, all this is 
is uh, just alcohol. So the alcohol ink without the ink in it. Um, and this just blends in the colors and this is basically just like a white. Um, and we can leave things as well so that we can indicate that they're white and light. So we're gonna just make this, um, I don't know if you need the, the numbers of these. I, I've mostly used Ohuhu markers except for the black one, which is Copic, but I mean, this is just like a hundred black. Um, this is neutral gray six. Um, this is neutral gray three. And then this is cool gray two. Um, and it works. So I'm just gonna leave them here to the side. Um, while I finish up the kind of sketch part of this. <clears throat> okay. So there we go, top part. Top part of her has a line. Okay, I think for now we can go in and do some more damage <laughs> i'm kidding i'm kidding we're just gonna um we're just gonna take our other pencil which is a uh 2hb and we're gonna go on the outsides and do some outside um lighting just to make the veil stand out and the other parts stand out more And not all of this is completely similar. Um, there's a lot of parts that I definitely didn't completely emulate, but I hope you guys enjoyed this um, nonetheless. Okay, so probably this is the greatest point to start doing some, um, maybe start doing some line work and uh, going and doing even more detail, I guess. So I'm gonna start with the um, bodice and kind of make some of these lines thicker so that her bodice just looks nicer. She also has this necklace, which is basically just like a bunch of little ovals um, or a bunch of little circles that look a little hollow. Um, they have these little connectors that are even smaller. Uh, to be honest, it's actually not that important, but I do like to kind of make things look pretty close. Illustration isn't about making things look completely the same, but trying your best. And um, I know you guys are always like, you know, trying your best and figuring things out, um, irregardless of whether or not you know, you're taking a break with drawing, you're going forward with it, um, you know, as long as you feel like you can express yourself creatively, I say go for whatever, you know, makes you, you know, feel happy or is a good you know, hobby or interest, passion. Okay, we have our rope um, that I've done with our little not um and what else do i have to figure out i would say most of the issues lie in the kind of lines of the veil but to be honest i don't i don't find them too too daunting um there's like this bead at the top and then she has these like little i don't even know what they are but they connect to the veil, I suppose. And then these two, two sections that connect to the veil, I think. And I'm just gonna add some lines to indicate some bleeding. Okay. Uh, well. <laughs> if I'm gonna be completely honest, I feel like this is the perfect time to just do some line work. And we've, we're about an hour in, and I usually do my live streams for about two hours. So, we're gonna do black line work. I have my black liner right here. 
and the number zero one sakura pigment pigma micron yeah they're great uh the only issue i have is that sometimes i get pretty heavy-handed um so i just end up smushing the tip a lot and um, ruining the tip so learn from me be a little gentle with your um with your liners <laughs> Okay. And by the way, so I'm using this thinner line work um, Sakura Pigma Micron because uh, the outer lines are going to be darker and the inner lines are going to be thinner. So that's kind of my line work rule um, that I've been implementing. There are going to be areas that will be um, darker, like under the sleeves will be, I'll use a dark line there, but a lot of the times the thick lines I'll save for the border. So sometimes what I do is that I look at my reference while I'm doing the line work just to make sure I didn't mess everything up because um, sometimes I just don't fully trust my sketch work sometimes um, maybe that's just me it up fully <laughs> and we have all of these little like what it looks like is that it looks like the sleeve is basically just like a bunch of ribbons that uh, were sewed together and I can't imagine how long that would have taken to be completely honest This puffy sleeve. Oh my goodness. I love puffy sleeves. I just feel like I um I haven't I haven't worn any since like the late like as a child, I guess. We need to bring back puffy sleeves. <laughs> I need to call my governor and tell him to bring back puffy sleeves. I'm kidding. Okay, so we have our veil we got going on. Perfect. So I'm, I'm not really a child of the 90s. I was born in the 90s, but uh, a lot of the fashion that I'm seeing now is kind of coming back like the Y2K kind of um, era of wearing clothes in a really specific manner. Um, the conglomeration of so many different colors of wearing like Disney Channel outfits where one minute you're wearing 50 different patterns um, all in kind of monochromatic fashion. So imagine you're wearing like five different patterns of like pink or something. And I, I love those. It was such a bold statement. I think it was just really fun for TV, but I never actually saw anybody wearing them in person. Maybe a few people, and I was always crazy jealous of them uh, because I, I just wanted to wear those types of really flamboyant outfits. Um, 
but I never had the like boldness to do so. <laughs> I don't know. I I just like looking at what other people like wearing. But now everything is a bit monochromatic and um, not very like there's patterns aren't really a, a big thing anymore. Uh, maybe my perception is is not correct, but uh, patterns were not as big as when I was much younger. Um, I'm not sure why that is the case. <laughs> a lot of things are pretty same samey. Um, outfits in full black or like they're kind of minimalist actually. Minimalist fashion uh, was a big, it still is a big thing. Um, but that is not what this lovely lady is wearing. No, no, no. She's wearing the most maximalist fashion um, you can see. I can't imagine how long it took for them to put her in costume and to figure out, you know, like, how do you even wash a garment like this? Because when you're, at least in my experience of seeing people and, and hearing about people do plays, is that you're under these really hot lights. I think the reason why I, I really thought about that is because I was watching the, um, someone's commentary about the movie Cats, and uh, I hope you don't stop watching this live because I mentioned Cats, but they were they were talking about the costumes and how like some of the costumes just weren't washed as often um mostly because it's just in terms of necessity and stuff but i found that really fascinating and quite fun that their costumes are just like fluffy like sleeves and arms and the not washing thing was not the fun part i think the the fun part was just looking at the costumes so yeah, that was the fun bit. <laughs> Anyhow. I hope you guys are doing well. Um, I am really just loving the way that um, she's looking right now. Just really liking it, I don't know why. Okay. Let's add some lines. So what I'm doing is kind of adding a little bit of cross-hatching. Uh, just to give a little bit of shadow. So when this fashion comes back in style, you guys have to let me know because I'm, I'm all about wearing the puffiest sleeves imaginable. How are you gonna be able to walk in a grocery aisle with these sleeves? That's a question I have. I don't think you'd be able to do it without help. <laughs> okay, so I cross-hatched in the direction of where I think the garment or the shape is going, kind of treating it like 3D. So below her arm, I've used these lines in a kind of curve to indicate the bottom of the arm. And then anywhere there's like a shadow, I've used tiny lines. And tiny lines to indicate hatchworking is pretty important because then it just doesn't look as jarring. Using thicker lines um, looks a little bit unrealistic. It doesn't really look the way you want it to. So I just recommend using small, small lines if you can. Some of my most fam um, favored, some of my most favored anime and manga that have the most beautiful art are ones that know the value of light and darkness and contrast and um, a bit of hatchworking. Uh, I think that's the term for it but yeah those are the manga that I, I look and I'm like oh, okay they like they know these they know how to work the page they know how to make it look good and yeah I'm often very um, often very in awe of them okay 
So we've done a lot of her dress and her skirt and um, I've really focused on it quite a bit. Uh, so we're just gonna go, go to her face. We're just gonna try our best. And if I mess up, you guys will be here and that's okay. I think it was two years ago, I was out and about with friends, um, you know, before the coronavirus, and I had brought my sketchbook and I was just waiting for them, and I think I remember someone watching me and being like, did you draw that? And I'm like, um, yes, I, I did. It's in front of me. I, I drew it. I don't know who you think drew this, but yes, I drew it. Um, <laughs> and from that point, I was just thinking like, oh, I guess drawing in public garners like a, a reaction. I didn't mind. It was just kind of funny. I wasn't upset either. There's also um, the... <laughs> I used to go to this restaurant all the time to go draw and, and get sketches figured out and I can't go anymore because of the pandemic. I miss it a lot. It used to be super fun for me. Okay. So, she's got the best brows though. Across her face. She is very wondrous. Okay. There you have it. And I use these tiny lines, so vertically, to go down uh, on her face to indicate some shadow. And I don't think I did a too bad of a job. Okay, we have mostly all of the stuff, the lines figured out. Um, I would say this is the perfect time to then uh, kind of shade the background, uh, which just seems a little bit haphazard, but I think this is like the perfect time to do it. So to my knowledge, the corners of her are black. So the corners of the page, black, black, um, and then we get some like gray in the middle. Um, so we have like a lighter gray and then we have like a bunch of black and that's kind of what I'm looking at it's not a full I, I want to use black even though it's not a full black so yeah and then for the veil I'll end up using a highlighter uh, to highlight that portion so I think I just really want to go for it because I just want to make her pop immediately and we have about you know, an hour to go. Um, so I wanna take my, my time here. So I think the top of her head, yeah, think about it to here. Yeah, so the corners will be black and then the bottom portion will be black as well. So I'm just gonna start there. Okay. We have our black that I did quickly, and then we'll take our um, medium gray shade and we'll just go for it.
And before I go for it, I think I'm just going to use um, my... I wonder if I need to use a liner? Eh, probably not. Okay. If I need to, it'll be later. I was thinking I could just line her from the background to create that bold line, but I realized that uh, maybe that's not necessary with the way that this works. Gonna get a neutral gray. Middle of the page. And the paper that I'm using, if I didn't mention it, it's um, watercolor paper, which helps. It helps absorb the ink and um, not create too much paper damage. Sometimes the paper can be looking real difficult to deal with. Okay, so we sort of have um, our background, um, there we go. So now we can kind of work on uh, erasing whatever parts we have issues with and then lining the exterior in black as well um, because we used kind of a grayish tone. So I'm just going to quickly finish it up. All right. Um, I hope you guys don't mind, but I'm going to go get a little bit of tea real quick. It'll take a second. Um, and I'll be right back. So this is, consider this like our, our break, I guess. Okay, break in like a minute, I'll be back. Okay, hello. We are going to be continuing, um, trying to finish her up and do some shading and um, get that all set. So, um, first but not least, we're going to be lining the outside of her image. So, I'm gonna be using a Tombow, what is this? Is this a calligraphy pen? I think I wanted the other one. Oh, here it is. Okay. So I'm going to use the Tombow brush pen, and I'm just going to line the outside of this lovely lady. And this is something that I do a lot anyways, so it's not really a surprise. Even though the background is dark, it's still helpful for me to do this. So there you have it, and I'm going to be, um, let's see, is there anything else I need to be doing line work wise? I think I'll just, I'll clean up her face, so I'm going to just erase, so this is going to be the point of erasing, and then we're going to get some, we're going to see where, hopefully where I kind of didn't 
line as much and then those parts will kind of pop out a little more and then we can kind of shade this there we go okay. I'm just kind of shade uh, not shading <laughs> I'm erasing I'm erasing um, so that we can start shading for real so we can get all the pencil marks off and I'm using a just a regular eraser that's kind of connected to a um, two HB pencil because it's just smaller and easier to deal with. Okay. Now that we erased the pencil marks off our lovely but angry lady. Now, I believe, I just want to make sure that I am in focus. Okay, we're in focus, we're good. Okay. Now time to start. <laughs> we're not going to be using a lot of too dark colors because we don't want her to blend into her background. Um, but the bottom part of her is definitely in a darker shade. So I'm just going to be um, going in with the NG03 and shading up the areas that I think will probably be darker and then um, going in later and darkening or lightening certain areas. So underneath her hair is a dark point for sure. And um, her entire hair actually has some shadow, but the bottom of her hair mostly. Um, around the outside as well. Um, also the bottom of her kind of like outfit on the edges. Um, let's see. So the top of her arm is highlighted, but the bottom has a shadow. So we're just gonna keep that. And then also the entire bottom part of her dress, um, but the part that isn't really in the shadow is the rope. So part of the rope is not. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna shade the bottom in this shade and then um, shade the side too. And then also on the other side. And then we'll use our lighter shade, our gray. lighter gray and then it's mostly in lighter gray okay so now we can use the lighter gray um, to do a little bit more shading so I'm kind of near her sleeve this under part of her sleeve for sure of course there's not really much highlight there um, there's highlight on the top of her sleeve here, which we want to keep. Um, the part of her sleeve, her puffy sleeve here, and her puffy sleeve about here also are in shadow. Um, the edge of her puffy sleeve, and kind of a lot of the veil. But we're never going to make the shadow be um, darker than or about we don't basically <laughs> I don't know how to explain this but basically we don't want the background and the foreground to be misunderstood we want the foreground to look more um, presentable and less confusing 
So underneath her neck as well. Now we can use the darker colors. Sparingly though. So underneath her hair is definitely the darker shade. Okay. As well as kind of underneath this area too. And I wonder if it's because the rope is just um, a bit further out and that's why some parts of it do catch the light. But um, this part kind of catches the light a bit more and then the top part, so. Uh, what else? This area here, as well as this under area here and this under area here. And I'm just gonna blend out a lot of these areas. But just being really sparingly about, you know, where everything is. All we're doing is that we're just going to keep shading. Um, and the places where um, it's just going to be more visible are going to be near the top where her face is. And I think I'm just going to go in with the light gray. And I'm just gonna take out all of the lightness in the bottom frame because um, there's not really much lightness so I shouldn't keep this light part because there's no light part in the frame most of the light parts in the top so I think that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna grab this gray the light gray and I'm just gonna do a once over swatch of this bottom part so now we have greater focus on the top part of the page keeping that cohesion some of these lines over here And now for the sleeve, the bottom part of the sleeve, we still need to shade. So I'm just gonna kind of go in with some of these. Just kind 
of coming into light. She kind of looks a little bit more, more and more like a, um, like the reference picture, which is pretty exciting. Okay. All right. Um, is there anything else I needed to do? on this bottom area. Oh, I just remembered. So there's this space here, I don't know if you can see it, that I forgot to make uh, <laughs> darker. So I'm just gonna add this little, definitely a space, so I don't know how to indicate this here, but if you can see, um, this area needs to be darker. So I'm just gonna go for it. so that you can kind of see that her veil is not connected to her torso. Okay. All right. And then it makes sense the bottom of the page is darker, so I can definitely use black as well. Okay, so what else do we need to do? We still need to shade the top part of the torso. So I'm gonna grab my lighter gray. Hopefully it works this time. So we're grabbing the lighter gray and going in to the divots of her bodice. Her bodice here is not completely white and I definitely don't wanna portray it that way. Her dress is a darker shade and her bodice is the lighter shade. Just a little bit, not that much. And I'm getting more, <laughs> I'm getting more issues for some reason. YouTube's giving me the thing that I, I am having issues with my bandwidth. I hope I don't have any interruptions. Yikes. Okay. So I guess since I'm having issues, I'm gonna do the starting soon and I'll try to get back to you. Um, this is pretty frustrating. I don't know why this is happening. I'll be back. <laughs>
Hey everyone, so I tried to look up what my issue was and um, I think it's that my bitrate is a little too high for this stream. Uh, for next streams, I hope to lower the bitrate um, manually so I can see what the issue is. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Hopefully we can fix it in future things um, and so that you guys don't experience much buffering. So. Uh, let's continue. So I believe what I said was that I wanted to, um, create some more shading on the top part, um, of her torso. So kind of just some of the lines that are indicated. I also wanted to shade the back part. So this part of her, which kind of connects in with her hair, I wanted to shade uh, just so that I could look more like the reference image and also it doesn't make sense that something that is so like so basically her her hairline is about here right that's kind of where the the front of the veil sits and on the back of the veil is kind of where the shadow is because we want to create a more 3d expression so that's what I'm gonna be doing is that I'm just gonna be trying to make this area a bit more like okay like there is a bit of shading in the back we're good um, and I'm just gonna kind of add to her hair while I'm here as well, also I'm going to try to add to her eyes so I did create some shadowing here but I'm just gonna add a little bit to it very very slightly um, and also to her lips and then to the bottom of her nose. So that should kind of create a bit of a difference, a bit of a more dramatic look. So, and that's what we were going for. Okay, so the shadow in the neck, the part near her chin will be the darkest part. Duh, it's kind of where the chin recedes and into the neck. There's the under part of the chin, of course, that'll be darker. As it comes out, it's going to be lighter. So I have my blender here, and I'm just gonna blend a little bit the light gray so that it kind of meshes into the like bodice chest area. Um, the underside of her necklace, I'm just gonna add a little bit of tiny little shades to indicate that the necklace is a three-dimensional three object, so we don't have to worry too much about it. Um, and then I think last but not least, I just need to, um, darken her eyes and, uh, create some more shadow in her face. So the side of her face has some shadow as well as the other side of her face has some shadow, uh, near her eyebrows also had some shadow. So I'm adding that as well as this area near her nose so even even if someone's really young they might have these like shadows near their face because the cheeks will be here um, and then the eyes also create a bit of a shadow there's like underneath eye shadow as well um, especially since the top of her brow is creating such a dramatic shadow on her eye so that's what i was intending to Kind of capture and her eyes are not white they're black um, at least in the image so we're just gonna go ahead and go with our liner and just make it dark okay and we're just gonna have it she's upset um, she's not about to be told what to do and that's okay okay so her nose is about shaded enough I think 
side of her face too. I think for the sake of what we're doing, we want to keep um, the front of her face pretty light. Um, and I think I'm just going to go in and do a little bit more kind of shadowing in, near her arm. So this part of her arm is darker. There's like a thin line that was light, so I kept it out. Um, this was the N neutral gray six. So the, the darkest part was the neutral gray six, and then the lighter part was white. That's the strip of white. And then I'm just going to go in with this and try to create a bit of a shadow there. Um, there's definitely shadow here and here and here. Um, there's shadow in the inner parts, um, but I think we're just gonna go in with our liner for now. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna go in with the liner and the most extreme parts I'm going to line with this darker brush pen. So near her neck, I'll be doing, which makes sense, um, underneath the arm, here, makes sense, and underneath this arm as well, makes sense, and also in the hair. Now time for just some veil lining. So I'm just gonna go ahead, grab my thin liner, and try my best here. I hope you had fun drawing with me and that you had a, um, a splendid time. Um, maybe you learned something, maybe you just had fun watching. Uh, overall, you know, if you, if you noticed, I definitely messed up quite a few times and that's completely okay. There have been many times where I'll be drawing something and I'll really dislike it, and um, I think that's actually pretty normal. I've heard that if you dislike a lot of your art in a certain time period, it means that your eye is more advanced than your hand. And what that means is that your perception of your art, you know what's wrong with it, you can see what's wrong with it, but you don't know how to change it. So your kind of eye, your aesthetic viewing, what you see, uh, is, is way more advanced than your hand skills. So don't feel discouraged if you suddenly realize you don't like your art, because I'm also going through that as well. So I have to constantly remind myself like, hey, this is not a reflection of you. This is just, you know, your, your progress in your, in your art. And that's, that's all I gotta say about that. So, uh, let's see. I think she's looking marvelous. I don't know about you, but I'm just overall really enjoying how she kind of turned out. <laughs> oh, not gonna lie, I was a bit worried previously. I was thinking, well, she's such a dynamic individual with these amazing puffy sleeves. How could I ever, ever compare? <laughs> I'm sorry, you didn't need that accent, but yeah. I was just wondering, like, how am I supposed to be drawing her? She's just so amazing. But here we are, doing the do. All right. So I just forgot that the edge of her sleeve was a bit darker. And I think, let's see, her bodice is a little too light, don't you think? I just realized that, okay. So we can go in with our NC or NG06 and just kind of 
lightly tap each one of these empty spaces with our dark color and then go in with our neutral gray and tap them again. Hopefully we can blend them out. I'll often use a darker color and then I'll just blend it out with the white or the lighter color. So I'll have like, um, for imagine, if I, if I wanted to create a blend, I'll use the NG3 and then I'll just blend out with the CG2. Um, or if I want to blend the black into the gray, I'll start with the black first and then just use the gray to blend everything out and move, you know, where things need to be. Um, and yeah, I think maybe this is the part where we can kind of start maybe do a little bit of highlighting perhaps. So I've brought my liner pencil, which should be here. <laughs> you go you're not on the table are you there we go sorry it was in my basket of all goodies so even though her eyes are in the dark I do want to emphasize some areas that I think just blend in and I just want to emphasize more so the top the bottom of her lip has this little highlight um, which most lips do. Her eyes don't have a highlight, but I want to check and see if it would look bad. No, I actually do like it highlighted. Okay, we're gonna keep the eyes highlighted. And then also the hair, kind of about here and then the bottom part of the hair as well. We're kind of lining it to make it pop out from the background. Perfect. And I think the veil um, already has a highlight, but we can kind of highlight the outside of the veil. So I'm going to just take the liner or the, this is basically a jelly pen. So it's a gel pen that I like using for highlights. It is not opaque, but my intention is not to create opaqueness. I don't want a brilliant white. And if I do want a brilliant white, what I use is basically this. This is um, my gouache pan. I have a bunch of these in many different colors and I use this very, very thin brush right here. And then with a little bit of water, I'll create the highlight there, that way if I really want a brilliant white. But I don't often use a brilliant white. I just don't see the need to. Um, it's not really that necessary and sometimes it's a little too jarring just like you know some digital artists say okay you don't use black because it's a little too jarring and it doesn't exist in nature um like true black that appears on a computer um but also true white also doesn't exist in nature unless if you actually like look to a certain you know snowy snowy outside and stuff like that so that's all i gotta say about that um i'm gonna do some detailing on her bodice uh i kind of just want to create a little bit of texture there And a little bit of a emphasis here underneath. And I think we're done with her. Um, I think she's looking pretty good. I don't really have anything else to add. I, sometimes if you add too much, you end up, you know, with a situation where, <laughs> where you're thinking like, oh, you overdid it. And that's happened to me many times before where I definitely immediately think like, oh, I overdid it. Like, this is just too much. 
um, but yeah, before I, before I go overboard, um, I just want to thank you guys for being here on my, like, YouTube live, um, this is my first time trying YouTube, uh, I hope to create more content here instead of on Crowdcast, um, I did have some bandwidth issues, but I hope to really fix that, and maybe it's just easier to click on the YouTube link instead of the Crowdcast link, because you would need some sort of, um, account for that and maybe that's just a little bit annoying so um yeah for now i wish you all well uh if you have any questions feel free to ask me but ultimately i feel like we're pretty much done um she definitely took a shorter amount of time than i thought she would um and yeah, I think that's all I gotta say. Uh, I wish you all well, have a wonderful Saturday, stay safe, um, eat good food, and um, wash your hands, that's all. Uh, all right, uh, love you all, bye. <laughs>